Raymond Lodge was the youngest son of Sir Oliver and Lady Lodge and was training to be an engineer when World War I began. Raymond then volunteered for service in September 1914 and because of his engineer training was given a commission in the 3rd South Lancashire and became 2nd Lieutenant Raymond Lodge. After his training he was sent to the front in the spring of 1915 and attached to the 2nd South Lancashire Regiment of the regular army and was not long before he saw action in the trenches near Ips. In the trenches, he was lucky to survive many encounters from shell fire and shrapnel, but his luck ran out on the 14th of September 1915, when he was struck by a fragment of shell in the attack on Hooge Hill, and died in a few hours. The following notification came via a telegram from the War Office on the 17th of September 1915, with the following words. Deeply regret to inform you, the 2nd Lieutenant R. Lodge, 2nd South Lancashire, was wounded on the 14th of September and has since died. Lord Kitchener expresses his sympathy. The following telegram was sent from the King and Queen on the 21st of September 1915. The King and Queen deeply regret the loss you and the army have sustained by the death of your son in the service of his country. Their Majesties truly sympathise with you in your sorrow. However, that would not be the last time his parents would have communications with their son, when on the 25th of September 2015, his mother was sitting with a medium called Mrs. Leonard. The medium had received the following message, purporting to come from a deceased son, Raymond. Tell father, I have met some friends of his. His mother asked him for a name, and he replied, Myers. Myers was a close friend of his father's, who had died many years ago in Rome when Raymond was just 12 years old. Two days later, on the 27th of September, she had another sitting with Mrs. Leonard, who informed her that her guide was a young girl with the name of Fida. Short time later, the meeting went into a trance, where she described a young man with a message that said he finds it difficult, but he's got so many kind friends helping him. He didn't think when he first woke up that he was going to be happy, but now he is and he says he's going to be happier. He knows that as soon as he is a little more ready, he's got a great deal of work to do. I almost wonder, he says, shall I be fit and able to do it? They tell me I shall. I have instructors and teachers with me. People think I say I'm happy in order to make them happier, but I don't. I've met many new friends. I don't know them all. I've met many who tell me that they will explain why they're helping me. I feel I've got two fathers now. I don't feel I've lost one and got another. I've got both. There is a weight off my mind, and I feel brighter and lighter and happier altogether. There was confusion at first. I could not get my bearings. I didn't seem to know where I was. But it was not very long, he says, and I think I was very fortunate. It was not very long before it was explained to me where I was. His father, Oliver Lodge, was an experienced researcher into paranormal phenomena and a former president of the British Society for Psychical Research and believed that his son was communicating with him from the spirit world. Before they approached other mediums, Sir Oliver was careful who he communicated with and remained anonymous in his inquiries with various mediums to prevent possible charlatans gaining information on him and his family. Sir Oliver and his wife then proceeded to have regular sittings with mediums to enable them to further communicate with their deceased son. Their son claimed that the spirit world was like a summer land and was a place where the dead were allowed time to recover from the shock of their death. They were also reunited with relatives who had previously died. Raymond also claimed to have been reunited with his brother and sister and the first person to greet him when he first passed over was his grandfather. He said that his surroundings were much like that on earth and he lived in houses made of brick and there were trees, flowers and rivers and the ground was solid. There were also libraries. People were initially allowed to wear earthly clothes but eventually most people wore robes. People were even allowed to smoke cigars and drink whiskey if they still had the cravings. To test his son further, he asked him very personal and private questions. Well, Raymond had amazing knowledge and detail of his life on earth 
that his brothers had given him the nickname Pat, and he'd called his hockey teammates Norman, which were correct on both accounts. He was accurately able to describe his drawing room of his home. He also knew the name of their family pet Peacock, and was able to describe a tent and sand yacht that he and his brothers had built during their seaside holidays. However, there was one piece of convincing evidence that could not be explained away. Where on September the 27th, 1915, a medium had told his mother that Raymond had talked about a photograph that had been taken about two months before he was killed. A short time later, a mother of one of the other soldiers in the photograph had written to her, asking whether she would like a copy of a photograph that had been taken that had included her son shortly before he died. Before the photograph had arrived, his father attended a seance where he wanted to know more about the photograph that his son was in. Through the medium, his son said that the photograph had been taken against a black background with lines at the back of them, and also that while they were posing, someone was leaning on him, but was unsure whether that came out in the photo. When the photograph finally arrived, everything was as son had described, from the dark background and the lines at the back were roof timbers that formed vertical lines. However, the most convincing aspect of the photograph was that an officer could be seen leaning on him, just as Raymond had described. The strangest thing was that three photos had been taken, and only one of the photos showed someone leaning on him. Yet Raymond had known this and was uncertain whether that had been the actual photograph that had been chosen. This is a familiar description that many people have given when describing the afterlife. Is it proof that when we leave this earthly existence, we do not suddenly cease to exist?